Hey everyone, Mininth here. So I got this comment on a video asking how to set up a Steam controller in 2024 as that's kind of gotten a little bit complicated. Um, I'm not going to touch on my particular frustrations with that. Instead, I'm just going to go through the process and I'm going to do that by breaking open a new inbox Steam controller that I have lying around. Yes, I'm going to do that for you guys here and hopefully uh, show you how to do it and it'll go well doing this live, no script. So on Reddit, you can see this post, which I'll link to. And in order to update the firmware for these, since it's no longer part of the Steam input user interface, which is frustrating, but again, not gonna really touch on that for now. Um, but if you go to this Reddit page, there's also a Steam forum post where you can find it as well. Uh, you'll be looking for this direct link here and once you get that downloaded, what you'll want to do is extract it and you'll eventually get to here. And there is a readme file as well here that we'll go through. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and get the controller opened up real quick and we will uh, do that. I do note you need Steam exited first. So, so just completely exit out of Steam for now. And uh, let's go ahead and get this open. There we go. The sticker's kind of tough. But that will allow us to slide that off. And then this one as well. Completely new in box team controller. There it is. So you'll have the controller. You'll have couple of AAs. You'll have the dongle. Uh, this is the proprietary dongle. Now if you're buying it used, you might not have this. Um, a lot of people either lost these, damaged them, or sold them to people who do VR because these could be flashed with firmware to allow multiple Vive controllers or Vive trackers to be hooked up to your computer at once for full body tracking. Uh, so unfortunately a lot of these to get sold, they're, they're very rare. Uh, that makes new in-box controllers quite valuable, in my opinion, which is why it's kind of sacrilege to break one open, even though I don't need to. But I, I really want to show you guys this process. Um, I don't need this. Uh, luckily, one proprietary dongle can connect up to four controllers at once, um, so that's not going to be a problem. Uh, if you only have one, um, you can connect up to four, as I said, but uh, I already have mine in my computer, so I don't need that. Um, then in this tray, let me move this aside. Uh, you'll see the quick start guide, which is no longer relevant. You will see this, which a lot of people have questions about. Um, they're confused as to what the purpose of this is. Uh, this is dumb. This is just a point A to point B connector. That, that's all it really is. Um, and it's designed to get the dongle kind of, if I can get the plugged in real quick. It's designed to get the dongle out from behind your computer. So instead of plugging this into the USB port, you'd plug a cable into this and then that into there. Uh, it's for connection reasons. If you have trouble uh, with signal to noise ratios or anything like that. Yeah, if, if you're having trouble with interference or signal to noise or just a bad connection and the dongle is plugged directly into your PC, you might want to move it to a better location. And that's what this is for. It's just an extender. Don't need that. And then in this is the USB cable that it comes with. Uh, this is what we're going to be using in this. If you don't have this because you bought it used, it is a micro USB cable. And you're going to want to find one that does both data and power. Uh, if you use just one that can do power, it's not going to work. So let's set this aside for now. Let's go ahead and unravel this. And we're going to do this hardwired. We're not going to do this over the air. Hardwired just to make this easier. So this, of course, plugs into your computer. This plugs into uh, the controller or into the extender for the dongle. All right, here we go. 
heard it power up. And if you can hear that, it's in lizard mode. So that's fun. Okay, so again, we're gonna wanna update the firmware for this. So let's look at the readme. Readme states, uh, run, exit steam and run the following to update the controller to the Bluetooth firmware, ble.bat. It runs two separate .bat files in sequence, ble host and ble radio. And those are in here, ble host and ble radio. I'm not gonna worry about that, but we're gonna run this one. And hopefully it works. Again, I'm doing this live. I haven't done this basically in forever. Oh, by the way, I'm on Windows 11. Uh, this is a command line interface which really only works on Windows. It kind of screws the Linux crowd over a little bit. And that's another reason why I'm kind of frustrated at Valve for how they're handling updating the firmware moving forward. It is what it is. So let's go ahead and run this. More info, run anyway. All right, it says it's successfully updated the firmware. Attempting to update via USB. So that was the controller firmware, not soon the radio firmware. Hopefully this is basically a progress bar. Again, I haven't really run this. Okay, now it's updating. Okay, so that was updating the radio, now it's updating the wired controller. I might cut out this dead air, by the way. I'm not sure if this should be concerning or not. All right, there we go. Uh, when it closes out like that, it should be complete. Um, so hold on one second. Get this out of the way. All right, as you can see, uh, it's working again. Now, I did have someone else do this before doing this prior. Um, they experienced some jankiness at the end of this process. Uh, there was something that was holding down the enter key. Um, don't know what that was about, but resetting their computer did that. So I do want to say, after it closes out and it's done, you may or may not encounter some jankiness. So just be prepared for that. Um, if you don't, that's good, but um, you might. So just be careful with that. And if we go over here, let me just kind of, yeah. So that's kind of the how it works. All right, so now the firmware should be updated on this controller. I'm going to unplug it, and then I'm going to do the um, command to get it into Bluetooth mode. Um, well, I've got to add batteries too, so unplug it, flip it over, pop the back, reach over to where I keep my batteries. Uh, these are rechargeable lithium ion double A's. Uh, Kratax, uh, 3,500 milliwatt hours, but because they're lithium ion, they're higher voltage, they've got voltage regulators into them, so the effective um, milliwatt hours is less, 
but uh, it stays 1.5 volts the entire time. I would recommend these or uh, another brand, uh, lithium ion. They're lighter than other rechargeables as well, just kind of as an aside. So let's get those in there. Close that up. And now uh, I might have to, yeah, for those of you who haven't used BLE mode before, here is a reference for the button combos. So, launches the controller in BLE mode. So that's what we're gonna wanna do on Windows. We're going to come over here and we're gonna be clicking add a device, Bluetooth. So now this is gonna be uh, looking, so. There we go, and it comes up Steam controller, connecting. And now it says connected. Done. And as you can see, lizard mode is still running. So the next step in this process, we've updated the firmware. We've confirmed that the Bluetooth mode works. I, however, want to use the actual dongle. Um, I just wanted to confirm that the Bluetooth was indeed working. So we're going to turn the controller off. And now we're going to switch to dongle mode, which is original receiver mode. Pair your controller to a new receiver, X. And then this is where we probably need Steam open. We're going to go to settings, controller. Pair a Steam controller. And you can see the light stopped blinking. Confirm paired devices. And there we go. Now it's on the actual dongle uh, that I have connected. And that should be it for... Um, Getting up and working. Pair Steam controller, confirm pair devices. Does that just turn it off? Nope, okay, well there it goes. So that's how you get it connected with Steam. Uh, with Bluetooth, it might be a little bit different. Um, when you click pair Steam controller, it might bring up a thing where you gotta press buttons on the controller in order to confirm. But yeah, so that's this controller. It is now updated to the Bluetooth firmware and it is connected to Steam and you can use it for all your stuff. Uh, I wish we could rename it. I would rename this like Steam Controller um, Backup or something like that, I don't know. Um, let's begin tests. Oh, they actually finally updated the screen. That is so nice. There we go. With all of the correct stuff, the clicks. Okay, so the click there still doesn't work. Uh, joystick, the click there. Uh, the triggers, it'll, it just has the numbers but not the things. Grip buttons, and it's still not... Okay, yeah, uh, it's the true and false down at the bottom. Alright, cool. So, hold exit that. Uh, can calibration at advanced settings. Gyro calibration, here you can see uh, the raw readings from the gyro. Sensors, trackpad calibration, joystick calibration, don't really need to click those unless you're experiencing some weirdness on the very edges of the controller, which doesn't happen very frequently. Uh, game rumble, yes. Steam haptics, yes. LED settings, yep. All right, cool. I am happy with that. So I'm going to end the video there. It seemed to work very successfully. Um, it just took some time. I'm still very frustrated, though, that... Valve decided it needed to be a command line tool instead of built into the new Steam interface. Like, I don't know why it couldn't just be underneath pair Steam controller, update Steam controller firmware, you know, in, in here or something. I don't know why. Um, I have spoken to Valve devs in the Steam controller Discord, and they have said that excluding it from the new user interface is intentional. I find that highly irritating because 
you know, having to come in and use a different tool. Why? You know, th this excludes the Linux crowd because this doesn't work very well in Linux from, from what my friend was saying. Um, only really works in Windows. So there you go. Um, I hope you did find this video useful, though. If you have a purchased a secondhand Steam controller, if you have one new in box or whatever, I hope you found it very useful. Um, it's not difficult, but it is complicated. So, yeah. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. And until next time, learn a new skill.